Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earth Master back here on this Tuesday night, uh, June 27th, 2023. It's about 10.15 here in the p.m. out uh, in California. Latest quake shows some movement into the South Sandwich Trench area. Uh, looks like we're just starting to get the ball rolling here in terms of earthquake activity. Literally within the past hour or so, we've seen a broad scale uptick in movement all around the globe. Let's go ahead and check out uh, the activity first down into the South Sandwich Trench, that 4.8 coming in just about an hour ago, uh, 55 kilometers deep. It's been uh, relatively quiet there, but we're seeing things kick back up. Also here along the West Coast, had a three-pointer come in about the same time, getting stuff moving uh, near Gilroy, seven kilometers deep. That is just on the Calaveras Fault Zone that extends into the San Andreas Fault here along the plate boundary. Slight uptick here and along the creeping segment around the Diablo range. Uh, Northern California, still seeing some uh, scattered spotty activity out there uh, in the mountain ranges and also specifically up around Reno. This has been an area of increased seismic activity here in the past few weeks or so. Still kind of watching that region for maybe some uh, potential larger scale movement. Also near the uh, Mariposa area. This here is in the, uh, well, is that Central California? I don't want to, uh, outside of Merced, there we go. To the east, up against the foothills here. Seeing a little bit of swarming earlier this morning. Looks like uh, a couple twos coming in, quite a about four of them. It looks like 2.3, the largest in that uh, sequence of activity. Southern California, again, is the quiet zone. Not really seeing anything major going on. This is all very typical small microquake activity. 2.5 and above, nada. So uh, things just kind of taking a break there across the southern portion of the state. A little bit of movement up in the Yellowstone, it looks like, as well. Uh, that uh, very small microquake activity. And some movement around Texas and the Oklahoma area. Uh, working our way over here to the west. Did see some activity earlier this evening as well. With a uh, pretty deep 5.8. 5.8 off the coast of Russia. This is way down there into one of these trenches. Uh, I'm not for certain if that's going to be the Japan Trench or not. Uh, more than likely, but that is well below this area uh, for the uh, 5.8, 442 kilometers deep. We'll watch up here, though, uh, for some further subsequent movement. That deep activity could trigger uh, some surface activity. Uh, a couple hours later here, just within an uh, this is within the last hour and a half, I believe. Did see a 4.9 down here in Guam, 55 kilometers deep. Slight uptick, I would say. Uh, definitely across the Western Pacific and adjacent plates. Down here across the Banda Sea region as well. Seen a 5-pointer and a 4.8 earlier uh, this afternoon. That uh, 5.0 this morning was actually 125 kilometers deep. Pretty deep movement being triggered across that area. The latest quake in this region, very shallow earthquake up here north of Fiji. We don't really see too much activity up here. Normally it's south of Fiji into the Tonga Trench or along the plate boundary here, but uh, that 5.6 coming in relatively shallow here outside the Fiji area. Now historical data shows uh, the majority of movement is shallow. Uh, indicated there in the white circles, the deeper movement quakes course going to be the darker the most darker regions here of the circles that's way down there into the Tonga Trench uh, medium depth is going to be the gray circles and of course upstream where all the stress builds up uh, some very large earthquakes historically at the surface levels uh, but it looks like you know, looks like occasionally we do see some movement up there it's just been a little while since uh, I've seen any activity specifically just north of Fiji with all this movement kicking up here around the Tonga area south um, still waiting for something to kick off there in New Zealand. Let's check out the uh, earthquake activity in this area. Um, still seeing some deeper movement quakes there. Look at that, 474. Well below the uh, surface south of Fiji. 4.5. Now the New Zealand area, nothing showing up uh, on the globe either. That is because I'm having the issue ac uh, accessing the EMSC servers uh, that uh, give the data or at least the earthquake 3d globe the data needed them to put uh, earthquakes up here so this is just the usgs right now um, i'm not going to show any small international earthquakes just anything above 
should be uh, everything above 4.0. Um, so I'll get to that. Hopefully uh, it'll fix itself. I don't know what's going on with it. All right, uh, look at that earthquake. That is just a, a tremendously deep earthquake there, 5.8. That's some good movement as well. Pretty good size earthquake. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the GeoNet servers itself. I'll have to just specifically look at that. Uh, let's take a look and see what we have there. A couple threes from yesterday. Um, let's go to earthquake drums here real quick. Let's just give us a, a good quick overview of what's going on. If I see any activity, then I will investigate. But it doesn't look like there's much. Uh, not for certain what this is here. I don't know if that's earthquake activity or not. That's kind of just off the Alpine Fault, but I'm not, I'm really not seeing it unless it's completely localized on any of these other seismograph stations here. So the activity in question is going to be this little spotty uh, activity. It somewhat looks like earthquake activity, but I'm not 100% certain on that. Um, it could be outside interference. It looks like some activity up here as well. I don't know if those are specifically along the timelines time as the other one kind of looks like it but uh, uh maybe earthquake activity right possibly we'll just keep an eye on that uh let's see nothing big though obviously uh let's see hawaii with all this movement stirring up around the pacific plate i would definitely keep an eye on that uh currently i believe the the um volcano there kilauea volcano is currently paused we'll double check with the uh hvo daily update that was put out earlier still paused uh, but again, all this activity stirring up around the Pacific Plate could, uh, who knows, it could amplify conditions around the Kilauea Volcano. We'll just definitely keep an eye on it. Uh, for now, pause is the word they use. Up into the Alaska region, uh, quite a bit of movement across the Cook Inlet area. Not seeing anything major going on, though. Uh, the latest one does show a 2.7 outside the Denali National Park up there in the beautiful state of Alaska. I did get a chance to visit this area a few years back in the wintertime, and it was absolutely stunning. I would love to visit that region in the uh, uh, in the summertime. I visited up there in the wintertime when it was cold, and the days were short. All right, uh, Yellowstone National Park. Let's go over here real quick and check out the Yellowstone overviews. Some type of technical glitch here on the seismograph stations here mammoth vault and soda butte those are not magma chamber movement or anything like that at all um earthquake activity uh there's some type of noise right here but i believe these are those thunderstorms that pop up all the time here roughly around this time frame and they stir up the environmental noise there across numerous stations you get high wind you get the thunder um you know maybe some hail out there as well and that showed up pretty nicely, um, it looks like, across the majority of the, the graphs out here. Uh, I really don't think that er that's earthquake activity. It looks more, le more or less like weather or some type of outside interference. All right, space weather activity here. From the solarham.net site, uh, still watching the sunspot that is currently facing us. It is getting a nice feature of magnetic lines. Look at that. That looks a little scary. Um, we'll watch that as a super huge arch there between these uh, fields. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna use that for a, uh, a thumbnail tonight on this video. That looks actually pretty cool. You guys see that beautiful feature, uh, and that is a sunspot region that we need to watch. It does harbor some potential, maybe for some strong M flares, uh, and that's going to be 3354. We've been watching it grow dynamically over the past couple of days still looks like it's growing in its growing stage uh, so we'll watch that area for some uh, flaring the rest of these sunspots here are well there's not a whole lot going on with them they're just kind of sitting there i was reading an article today on the potential early arrival of solar cycle 25 maximum and this came off on the ms i think it was i can't remember which site it was somewhat of a legit site uh, but they're stating that possibly, I'll maybe cover this tomorrow, uh, possibly we could be looking at the solar maximum come the end of this year instead of 2025 summertime. Um, but 
uh, you know, no guarantee. We're obviously still ahead of the predicted number and the predicted SFI, the Solar Flux Index chart here, which is the energy, so to speak. Um, we're still way ahead of that. But they mentioned some wording that it could peak out here at the end of this year. Um, again, we'll cover that tomorrow. I did post it up on my uh, Facebook page there. Uh, so go check it out if uh, you use that social media site. Um, uh, let's see. Let's get back here and see what we got going on. No major solar flares have been produced yet, but we'll continue to watch that one that's facing us currently. Um, no major aurora forecast here for tonight or next couple nights. Things look fairly calm and minimal. Uh, let's see what's Kevin got here. Kind of mentioning about AR 3354, the one that we just talked about. Uh, continues to expand in the northeast quadrant. The region is currently producing minor sea flare uh, activity, and depending on additional development, could soon become a threat for at least a moderate M class flare. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's growing, looking absolutely beautiful here, even on this image. I've got to watch that. You can almost see some of that magnetic line activity there. That Those arches are just crazy. Absolutely crazy to look at. See that arch? Arching over into like a totally opposite side of the sunspot region. It's pretty cool looking. Uh, but that's, yeah, let's see what happens overnight. All right, uh, what else we got? Storm Prediction Center. Well, that's today's activity. Um, not for sure how much has gone on from that. I haven't really seen too much activity in terms of tornadoes, just mostly hail and some wind events out there around those areas. Uh, tomorrow, day two, shows a broad area of thunderstorms. A uh, slight risk for some severe weather. It looks like 2% chances of tornado activity in the green. Most of the threat tomorrow looks like some damaging hail up into... Uh, way up north in minnesota goodness yes they do get the severe weather up there in the summertime kind of shifts north and of course we're watching the gulf seeing uh, what's going on as far as any specific tropical development right now there's a high pressure center parked out there and that's not going to be good for development in terms of hurricanes uh, so we'll put this in motion here and see what we have uh there's that blob of uh, moisture. It looks like around the 4th or 5th. A couple runs back here on this model showed a hurricane development. But right now it still just shows unorganized tropical activity coming into the Gulf there. Um, and then far out, uh, not seeing anything yet. But we'll continue to watch that uh, for some potential. Alright guys, I am out of here. Have a good night. And uh, make sure you stay safe out there. Keep an eye on things. Everything's getting all stirred up currently around the uh, plate tectonic world. So we'll see what's in store overnight. Have a good one. We'll catch you guys back here tomorrow morning. Peace out.